We got some new info regarding Sunday's game and some random updates to go over. Big Deek news. First, let's talk about the Steelers naming their captains for 2023. You got on offense, Kenny Pickett. Defense, Cam Hayward, TJ Watt. And special teams, Miles Killebrew. Yeah, makes sense. Pretty much the same captains as last year. Instead of Trubisky, you put in this year's QB1 in, Kenny Pickett. Although, Najee Harris is left out. Like, I don't think it would have hurt to keep Najee as a captain on offense. In fact, I'd be all for it. I think Najee's a good leader. I think captain would be something synonymous with him. But, it's not a decision that I or the fans make. This is a team voting thing. So, I do wonder, is the team having a a change of mindset or a change of heart, almost like Steeler Nation has? And seeing these Jalen Warren touchdown runs in preseason and just thought to themselves, forget captain for Najee, uh, is he even going to be RB1? But now let's get into some of the news that has popped up regarding the Steelers week one matchup with the 49ers. And it pertains to the opposition because you have two big name players that may not be suiting up. The first is Nick Bosa, and this has been an ongoing saga this whole offseason with his contract extension and whatnot. We had to deal with something similar with TJ back a couple years ago, but this one has led way, way more closer into week one than TJ's ever has. Now, here is Ian Rappaport giving an update on the situation. This is a hard contract to do. My understanding is they are already over, the 49ers are already over $30 million per year. They're already over TJ Watt. He is going to be the highest paid pass rusher in the NFL. That is not the question. The question is, does he beat Aaron Donald's contract of 31, uh, either 0.4 or 0.7 million? I can't remember right now, but somewhere in there. So that's the biggest question. That's not just it. There was a $5 million roster bonus that Aaron Donald got when he decided not to retire. So how to account for that, which is spread out over the years, it's, it's extremely complicated. And trying to figure out where Aaron Donald came in will help get this deal done but the two sides obviously have a disconnect in how it's configured. Then you have on the flip side of the ball, all pro tight end George Kittle could potentially be out with a groin injury for week one. It's actually the same injury that sidelined him last year in the first game of the season. So we'll have to keep note on that. But my question is, where are you guys with all of this? Because I'm seeing some people say they want Bosa and Kittle to play. Uh, I get it. Uh, We want to be tough. No excuses, everything like that. But I also want to win games. And what we have seen from seasons in the past, every game counts when you tally up the win totals at the end of the season and make the playoffs and all that type of stuff. So if you mean to tell me that Bosa and Kittle aren't going to play, that obviously will increase the chances for the Pittsburgh Steelers to win. So that's the side I'm on here. Like, Nick Bosa, try to get a deal that's better than Aaron Donald. Hold out for as long as possible for the most money you possibly can get, or at least for just week one. And then George Kittle, I mean, you don't got to suit up till week two or three, right? Rest up. Other Steeler news to go over, though. We got three new practice squad players that the Steelers signed over the weekend, and that gets the practice squad completely filled out to 16 players. You got defensive back Tariq Carpenter, running back Xander Horvath, and running back Quadri Oleson. Tariq Carpenter is a defensive back last year, played with the Green Bay Packers. They drafted him in the seventh round of the 2022 draft. Saw time in 14 games, had eight special teams tackles, also played at Georgia Tech in college, and looks like he had a pretty decent tenure there. Running back Xander Horvath, drafted by the Chargers in the seventh round of the 2022 NFL Draft as well. Rookie season, appeared in 15 games, started two, and had a whopping four carries for eight yards and five receptions for eight yards. Played in college at Purdue, had a total of 1,181 rushing yards and eight touchdowns, and 68 receptions for 592 yards and a touchdown for his career there. Last name is running back Quadri Olison. You may be familiar with him because he played running back at Pitt. In the pros, though, he was drafted by the Falcons in the fifth round of the 2019 draft. Also had some stops with the Cowboys, where he appeared in some regular season games, but was also on their practice squad, and also signed with the Jaguars this last offseason. So nothing crazy going on with those practice squad pickups, but we also have some Desmond King contract updates. It looks like he signed a one-year veteran benefit contract for $1.2 
Three two five million. Deal also includes a base salary of one point oh eight million and a maximum qualifying signing bonus of one hundred fifty two thousand five hundred. And because this is a veteran benefit contract, King's twenty twenty three salary cap charge will just be one point oh nine two five million. So again, great deal. Uh, this is what we assumed the contract was going to look like, but I guess you never know until the actual details are out there. But here is King because he did a little press conference, little interview with Steelers media recently. Here's King talking about what it means to sign with the Steelers and what he thinks his role is going to be. Like I said before, it's like a dream come true. I uh, always wanted to play for Mike in, uh, in the city of Pittsburgh. A lot of people say, well, me, I'm going to just say it's the way how I play. Physical, fast, smart, you know, and just, you know, go get the ball and I want to win. So. I think that's the culture here, and that's what I've been seeing every time I play against them. So I feel like it's a great fit for me. That's it for this edition of Big Deep News on a Tuesday. Hope you guys had a great Labor Day weekend. And we are officially just, what, four or five days away from the Steelers actually playing regular season football for 2023. And just, what, one, two days away from the NFL starting with Chiefs Lions on Thursday Night Football. So stay tuned for more coverage, more updates and whatnot on the Steelers leading up to kickoff on Sunday here at Big Deke News. Stay chillin' and peace.